sure, have you ever seen the crowd? It's an old movie from 1928 that has funny, shocking, and sad parts. It's not just for fun, it's got scenes that you'll remember for a long time. Look out for those moments that really stick with you as you watch. And if you have any stories or experiences about this movie, share them with us in the comments below. In the crowd, John and Mary are two faces among many. Their story begins with promise, but takes a turn when John's father passes away, altering the course of his life. Determined to make something of himself, John navigates the challenges of New York City while working as an accountant. He meets Mary, and they marry, eventually having children. Despite setbacks, including the tragic loss of their daughter, John remains steadfast in his belief that he is destined for greatness. However, as he grapples with the pressures of society and the realization that he is just one among the crowd, John's perspective shifts. Ultimately, he finds solace in the love of his remaining child, accepting his place within the larger fabric of society. Director King Vidor masterfully captures the frenetic pace of city life and the individual struggles within it, offering a poignant exploration of identity and belonging. The crowd stands as a compelling portrait of the human experience, reminding viewers of the power of resilience and acceptance in the face of adversity. The Crowd is a notable film recognized by the American Film Institute in 1998, making it one of the 400 movies nominated for the top 100 greatest American movies. Eleanor Boardman, the lead actress, was actually four years older than her co-star James Murray, a casting choice uncommon for its time when men typically married younger women both on screen and off. As of 2024, assuming its copyright has not lapsed, the film and all others produced in the same year enter the U.S. public domain. This film offers a unique glimpse into societal norms and relationships of its era, making it a significant piece of cinematic history. The Crowd, a movie from 1928, became well known later on. In 1953, Boardman, an important person in the film, was said to be living in Spain. In 2002, the American Film Institute recognized it as one of America's top 400 love stories. It also made it into 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, chosen by Steven Schneider. These recognitions show how much people still like the movie even after many years. Its characters and ideas still connect with audiences around the world, making it an important part of movie history. The Crowd, a 1928 movie, holds historical significance as one of the first 25 films chosen for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress in 1989. Apart from its cinematic impact, Johnny Downs, known for hosting The Johnny Downs Show, a local children's TV series set in San Diego, California during the early 1950s, also played a part in entertainment history. Portraying the character Johnny Jet, a former World War II pilot, Downs engaged his audience with entertainment and informative content in the backdrop of an airport hangar, alongside reruns of the Little Rascals film comedies. Tragically, the matinee showing of the crowd on December 31, 1929, was marked by the Glen Cinema disaster in Paisley, Scotland, where 71 children lost their lives. The crowd remains a significant piece of cinema history honored by its preservation and intertwined with various events in the entertainment world. The film The Crowd, released in 1928, made a lasting mark in the world of movies. In the 1960s, John Luke Goddard questioned the idea of remaking such a movie, saying it had already been done. Its influence was so strong that even many years later, people recognized its impact. In San Diego, a children's TV show named The Johnny Downs Show aired from 1953 to 1968, showing how much people enjoyed entertainment. The film premiered at the Capitol Theater in New York on February 18, 1928, marking the start of its journey into cinema history. The crowd stands as a powerful example of storytelling and the significance of ordinary lives on the big screen. The office building facade was laid on its side, allowing the camera to appear to rise to the upper floors as it ran along the track to the proper window. The leading characters' names are John and Mary Sims. Director King Vidor, six years later, used these same names for the leading characters in his production of Our Daily Bread. Vidor deliberately chose not to cast any big-name stars in the film, which was a tale of the Everman. James Murray was a studio extra whom Vidor had bumped into on the studio lot, while Eleanor Boardman was a minor MGM contract actress. In the late 1920s, Joseph Farnham penned title cards for around 31 films, including The Crowd. 
His work on this 1928 movie earned him an Oscar for Best Title Writing, a unique honor as it was the only time the Academy awarded this category. Farnham's distinction lies in being the first Academy Award recipient to pass away just two years after receiving the accolade. Louis B. Mayer, head of MGM, harbored disdain for the film and insisted on reshooting the ending. He envisioned a lavish scene set in a mansion with John and Mary beside a glistening Christmas tree. John, now successful in writing ad slogans, and Mary, with a new dialogue title expressing unwavering faith in him, would portray a different narrative. Director King Vidor employed innovative techniques during filming, including using hidden cameras on New York City streets to capture authentic crowds and settings. Real buses, trains, and even traffic cops lent authenticity to scenes. In a memorable instance, a police officer's admonishment to move along was directed at Vidor and his disguised crew seamlessly woven into the final cut. Vidor's approach captured the essence of everyday life, showcasing the struggles and triumphs of ordinary people like John and Mary. Through meticulous attention to detail and authentic portrayal of urban settings, the crowd offers a glimpse into the human experience of the era. Irving Thalberg, the producer, held the movie for a year before MGM released it, unsure of its reception. During a beach scene, John mentioned a slogan, a carload full of coughs, a twist on an old gold cigarettes ad slogan from 1926. The equitable building in New York, chosen as the setting for John's workplace, was known for its imposing presence. Built in 1915, it cast a shadow over much of the financial district, prompting a law for future buildings to be designed slimmer towards the top. This influenced the architectural style of the 1920s, seen in landmarks like the Chrysler and Empire State Buildings. In the crowd, during a scene on the train, one of John's detractors notices a dropped book titled What a Young Husband Ought to Know by Sylvanus Stahl. This book, first published in 1897, is a real piece from the late 19th century, offering insights into marital advice of the time. The film has been noted by many as potentially the first to depict toilets, though this claim remains speculative due to the loss of many silent films over the years. Dorothy Sebastian was initially cast as John's sweetheart and can be spotted in still 293-137, but she does not appear in the final cut of the movie. In summary, the crowd offers glimpses into early 20th century societal norms through its depiction of everyday life and relationships, including its handling of themes such as marriage and social interactions. The Crowd, a movie from 1928, got praised by critics but didn't make much money. Louis B. Mayer, who ran MGM, didn't like it. He thought it was too sad and got upset about a scene with a toilet, thinking it was gross. The main actor, James Murray, struggled with drinking after the movie came out. He ended up begging on the streets. He met the director, King Vidor, but turned down a part in a follow-up movie, Our Daily Bread, because he thought Vidor felt sorry for him. Murray died tragically in 1936, drowning at age 35. Vidor felt so sad about what happened to Murray that he wrote a script about his life called The Actor, but it never became a movie. The movie talks about a guy named John who wins a prize for a slogan, Slight O Hand, The Magic Cleaner, and gets $500 for it. If you count for how money has changed, that would be like getting over eight, $660 today. The movie shows how hard it was to make money and succeed back then. Overall, the crowd had some problems with MGM's boss and ended up with a sad story for its main actor. It also talked about how tough life was back then.